Okay, mm. so guys, this is going to be a journey for anyone who comes to Trade Locker, wants to learn, hey, what's the plan? I got $3,000 starting from scratch. I got nothing else. I know nothing else. Where should I start? What should I do? Stuff like that. I'm going to ask you question by question. <laughs> and we're going to figure it out for, it. for the person watching. Call this rapper on the rock, better say my name. Two step in the game, make me a big lane. Call me a Maltese H Y, can't make it rain. Getting sought by Tracy, but she ain't from the lane. Might see me in a Lamo, I go, but I'm on most. So first, let's uh, let me ask you each okay. question, just so that the someone watching knows which year did you start, Anthony? <laughs> I started when I was 17, like I like started trading when I was 17. Obviously, I take it full, so 11 years ago now. So, yeah. is that taking it seriously or? I mean, I was 17. You can't really take that much seriously. But I started looking <laughs> at the charts. Okay, got it. Like, I would I would say really really serious when I was like 19, 20. Okay. But like I was looking at the charts like at least 30 minutes a day. Okay, that's good enough. You know, but <laughs> that's, I, was, that's but I was 17. You know what I mean? I couldn't even create a. Uh, an account. An account. <laughs> um, I use my dad. <laughs> it's my dad's uh, name. Yeah. yeah, it works. Did you already start trading with money, real money, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, How much? I just hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Yeah. All right. And, and I thought I was gonna turn it into a million in six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? I thought I was gonna go from a hundred dollars to a million dollars in six weeks. And just as a perspective, where are you now? So you start with 100, 17? Things account I've ever traded was 17 million. 17? Million. Okay. Actively trading it. On my own funds. What about you? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm 32 now. I started dabbling, you know, not taking it fully, fully seriously at right, like the time that I was like around 20 years old, which is like around 12 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I started taking it seriously when I was 24. So that's almost like nine years yeah. ago plus. And um, and yeah, like capital wise, I mean, like back then it was, you know, I was still working, making like six hundred dollars every two weeks. So I could only afford maybe two, three hundred dollars in account and then try to actually work from that. Um, I've at that point in time, like I think I only built up accounts like around max back then, like around almost five thousand dollars, like max like that. I, I grew in, an account to back then. But but nowadays, I mean, it's very, very different, like the. The highest account that I've had so far for like with my own capital was like around like 1.8 million dollars for my account. Um, I invested around two, three hundred thousand, and then I just built that up to like around 1.8. So yeah. that's like you know the range that. So but, it, but it's always on average a six-figure account that I'm playing with though. Awesome. On yeah, average, we, we yeah. We trade very differently. So yeah. like the way we trade is like very differently, and it's like we know what we're willing to risk and how we're willing to risk. Yeah. Even though like. He'll make bigger gains on a four hundred thousand dollar account than I will on a on a five million dollar account. Yeah, because yeah. I yeah. go for yeah, and I eight, go for like very small gains. Like we don't yeah. have fun, but like well, I, I it could both be valid trades, but like how we like let's say I, I'll be focused more on like a swing trade. He, well, I'll be focused more on like an intraday trade, swing trade. He'll be more focused on like a swing trade because he likes to to look trade. on like you know um. Mm-hmm. A, a month perspective or that kind of thing. I'm like more interested in like a, a couple of days or like a week. So very, very different, but at the same time, you know, every single time that we're trading is still like a valid setup, but um, it's just based on like what we're actually trying to aim for. Yeah. Got it, yeah. got it. Cool, so someone like, let's say I, you <clears throat> guy, just you guy. moved in. Just moved in. <laughs> moved in, have 3K in my bank account and I work, like which job should, should I get first of all? So as far as what, like a like a regular job? Yeah, like um, I, I want to start trading, but of course I need to get some income. Time wise, I'll probably say I'm trying to find a job that um you know pays decent, but at the same time it gives you still enough time in the day to even study on the charts. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're you're working all day to the point that you get home and you're going to be tired and you don't want to get on the charts. So mm-hmm. try to find a job that's flexible enough to actually give you, you know, the time that you need to even put time into the charts. You know. Decent money, but at the same time, I feel like the time aspect of things is way more important than you know the, so the money that you're remote, getting. Remote sales, the volume remote. setting. Yeah. I do sales. Know. I yeah, sales. Sales is like the commission based. The number one job that you should have, like if you're trying to like create money, because it's going to teach you how to become a better entrepreneur, yeah. and it's on your own schedule to, mm. to an extent. Yeah. So like you need to make your money. So like what I like that's one thing that I did that helped me was get into sales, and it helped me because I had to. Be dedicated to myself and strong 
and you were able to make, you know, even if it was a thousand dollars in one day, like that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Like selling cars or selling, you know, chartering or finding something that someone else needs and finding out how to like meet that price. Like I know, so I know some people that literally a guy would go like, I want this watch, and he's like, I'm willing to pay sixty k. He'd go find another guy that had it for fifty eight thousand. Yeah. And he would make the spread. You know, so like finding some type of sales. Like, yeah. It's the most important. Because like long term, it's um, it's beneficial in like all aspects as well. Because anything that that you do like in the industry, it's still marketing in some kind of way. Like if you have a brand, you have to understand how to market. No way it. You, got it. you have to, yeah, for life. But did you guys understand that when you were starting out? Did you understand what you were doing? Were you doing it consciously? Um, because if someone it was out. They probably won't see how this will impact their long term. Well, um, I understood the, you know, um. The possibilities that it could make, you know, the potential of it. But um, I never understood, like, you know, damn, like, you know, I'll still be in it till this day. But I knew that I would be in it as long as, you know, the, the money was going to be there. So the fact that, um, like, back then, like, when we started making, it's like a couple hundred dollars here, a couple thousand dollars there, you know, that's going to be sufficient enough to actually make us get to, like, that next level that, that we want to get to, to even, like, w- w- want to keep on going. Because mm. once, once a person actually makes a decent amount of money, it could be a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. And then they see it hit the bank account. That's when everything changes, yeah. right there, you know. So, so, so seeing that first makes us just want to go a little bit harder and want to keep on pushing beyond the, the start of it. Yeah. I also believe it's not our job to teach people like exactly what we did. The journey will teach people True. what yeah. to do. So, like some people, it might be going to work at just a fast food place, and and they they, they maybe they still live at home. Like each person, different each situation is mm-hmm. going to be different. So like, let the journey teach you what you're supposed to do and follow your instinct yeah. inside of what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But like, make sure you're putting the work in. At the end of the day, it comes down to one thing. Work, work, work. Put the fucking work yeah. in. And, just, and being passionate about it. You know, it's, it's um, just being able to adapt to life, but also implement trading within that. That's the biggest thing because my life is very different from his life and his life is very different from your life and so on and so on and so on and so on. But you could still implement trading in, into your life in some kind of way, and then you got to learn how to adapt to it. So I got 3K job, um, learning something's happening, yeah. saving some money in my bank account. So what do I spend that money on? So with me, I would say, well, first, make sure that your expenses are taken care of first. You know, make sure you have at least a couple months t- taken care of so you can then invest, you know, freely. All right. Um, if you're making 3k a month, let's say, how much is rent? How much should I pay for it? Uh, okay. <laughs> First, I would say, um, you know, find some friends to, you know, get on. Uh, t- like, what I did was, I had a couple friends that we lived in a townhouse. I had a room, and they had a room. We just split the rent. Cool. It makes it a lot easier knowing the fact that I don't want to pay that $3,500 a month in rent. Yeah. You know, so try to actually, you know, dumb down your bills so it's a bit more easier to live. And then from that point, um, let's say even invest like 25% of your income every single month, you know, at least that ju- just so you have a, a, a little bit of cushion, but also the most important thing to invest into when it comes down to that is the knowledge, the information, like find out, find a mentor, find a person that pretty much already has, has been where you want to go. And then from that point, invest that money into that person. So you're already taking a shortcut into getting where you want to be. That's going to cut out a lot of headaches, a lot of stressful um, long nights that you might be crying, you know, losing money that, you know, you yeah. don't have and that kind of thing. So I feel like just investing money in a mentor first and then start to invest in your account after the fact. Yeah. I, I believe in starting, like, I believe learn the basics as well. You start with YouTube, like yeah. you know, YouTube is great. And then D- uh, disorganize, but, but it's great. It's, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. But it's going to like, it's going to teach you, um, it's going to teach you like problem solving as well. Mm. Like that's like why I love YouTube. But then I would say the second thing is like find a mentor, find an educator, find someone that can teach you mm-hmm. um, because it just cuts on the time. And like I always tell people all the time too, like, you know what, your mentor that you that you find might not be the first person's course you get. It might, sure. be the, it might be the third, it might be the fourth, it might be something else because, but it's going to teach you, even if it's gonna, it doesn't teach you what to do, it can teach you what not to do, mm-hmm. right? You might realize you're not a swing trader. Maybe your emotions can't handle swing trading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you go get a mentorship, and but, you, but these people don't know. They don't know what kind of trade they're going to be yet. They don't know what kind of education they need yet. Correct. So like, it's not bad to go through multiple mentors and multiple educators. Just because like we trade very, very differently, but we still make money in the markets, right? 
they might come to him first and they might say, oh, I don't really like this style of trading because my life is very fast paced. I want to learn swing trading. Okay, so that's for me. Or some people come to me and they're like, well, I don't really like swing trading because I have to sit here and watch the charts and I have to be in certain trades for months at a time. I want the money faster. Then they go down. So there's, there's two different types. So yeah. finding the different mentors, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I believe in you know investing in education and I also believe in um, not just on the charts, not just in Forex, but overall education, mm -hmm. like overall yeah. financial literacy, like, like learning how to become financially independent. Learning how much money you should save, you know, writing down, like, you know, buy notebooks. Like, I write down like, expenses and what I should spend, what I should make, goals, everything along those lines. I think th that that kind of comes with with just even be, being a part of the game as well. You know, like you don't learn everything at, at one time and then all of a sudden you're good. You learn it along the way. Like a person had um, messaged me the other day and he was saying um, something about, oh, like, um, can I withdraw $100,000 from so-and-so? And I'm like but you're not even making $5,000 a month. Like, why are you worried about the $100,000? Like, worry about that when it comes, you know? Yeah. So, but when it, but like when that time comes, like you will, you'll you would have it. learned so much that you'll be comfortable with saying, okay, my withdrawal is ready and I could take out my money. But if you're worried about something that's all the way down here, when you're only like right here, yeah. you're stressing yourself out for no reason. Mm -hmm. So the journey itself, you learn things along the way. So like when that time comes, you're prepped and you're, Mentally ready for it. Yeah, and teach, and t that's like a big thing that like we need, we want to teach people is that, you know, like you're not there yet, mm -hmm. but like give it time and go through the Correct. process because like like I see so many people they're always like they're focused on like this huge goal, mm -hmm. which awesome, have the huge goal, have that goal, but break it down. Yeah. Like, people be like, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars in one trade, mm -hmm. and it's like, but you haven't made a thousand dollars in one trade. Break it down. Start with a hundred dollars mm -hmm. in one trade. You know, okay, once you hit that, your next goal maybe is $110 a trade. Hit that, maybe your next goal is $150. Yeah. You hit that, then it's $200. Then, it's, yeah, then, it, then all of a sudden you start realizing it starts duplicating faster. So you, to make your first $1,000 in a trade is a lot harder than going from $10,000 in a trade to $100,000, I believe. Yeah. Once, you can, once you get to a point to where you can consistently make $1,000 in a trade, all of a sudden your, your risk tolerance, your understanding of the markets and everything awesome. goes yeah. way up. And so you're, you're, it might take you nine months or 10 months, whatever it may be, a year to make your first $1,000 in yeah. a trade. But I think going from 1000 to 10000 can happen in a few, in a few yeah. months. Because I remember like like my first $1,000 day, and I know you, you remember yours as well. Um, I was walking out of class um, in college and $1,000 in profit, I felt ecstatic. Um, but I also... Now I remember my multiple, multiple, multiple hundred thousand dollar days now, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, but the first I had to break past that thousand dollar trade first. And then that kind of like opened doors for all those other bigger trades, but it comes in time. And along that way, you, you learn so much from, from this analyzing, maintaining trades, all these things that, you know, has to be implemented to, to actually get to that, that next level that by the time that you're hitting those hundred thousand dollar trades, it's effortless at that point, you know? So, but that comes with time though. And risk tolerance. Rich, like, yeah, exactly. Risk tolerance, like what your what your ability, like as you grow, your 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 money grows, yeah. your charts will grow. Like like yesterday, I was in a trade, went from up positive fifty thousand, all within one day, positive mm -hmm. fifty thousand, mm -hmm. negative fifty thousand, positive one hundred and ten thousand, and I closed it today, this morning. Yeah. So like you, your risk tolerance, like you know, I mean, people will like you, like you become acceptable to that. Yeah. You go from. High numbers, to low precision high. on the charts, like what lot sizes that you're comfortable with, like how um, you're comfortable with the fluctuation of the charts, what sessions you, you like to trade, mm -hmm. if, if, if you like to trade news, if you don't, like you got to figure all these things out. Yeah. It's so many like, you know, um, details and everything um, that comes with this entire thing. So out of 100 people watching, let's say only five take this advice and take time, be patient. How do we, what do you have to say for the rest, 95? So why would they stop? What do they? I mean, um, people are hard-headed. Like when it comes down to like, like you could tell them the, the, the best advice ever. Like from you saying it, you're like, yo, this is some really, really good advice. And I, I hope you take it in. But a lot of times people just take it in one ear and out the other because they still want to do their own thing. People that do trade, they're, they're very, very hard-headed, but give it time, they'll learn in time. Mm. And when they get burnt on the charts for not doing that certain thing, they look back on what you said, 
Oh, I, they, yeah, like, like either change it comes with time. Or they'll, just, or they'll quit. Yeah. Like I personally do not think trading is like super hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not super hard. But that's coming from a person that has been inside it for so long. A brand that's new person what, is going to seem complex. Saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying, though. It's that it takes time. Yeah. Like, it just takes time. Like, like, I guarantee you there'd be a lot more successful traders if they said, I'm going to dedicate the next 10 years of my life. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm going to dedicate the next 10 years of my life. There would be a lot more successful traders. The problem is, is people want it in six months, and then they don't start making money in six months. They did. I think it's more just um, about the person, um, let's get passionate about it. Because even like when I started, I never ever said like, I'm gonna dedicate 10 years. No, like I just enjoyed it. So why would I stop doing something that I actually enjoy? It so happened to be, I enjoyed it so long that I'm, on, I'm, I'm gonna hit 10 years soon. <laughs> but um, initially, like I never said 10 years. Like I say, just find a passion for it and then yeah. fall in love with it. And then trust me, you will not stop playing the game. You know, <laughs> it's a game. That brings me to the next question. What is it that I could do or should do every day, week, or month that will inevitably get me there? So um, that I don't even have to think about the time. A be, a be, just just um, in the beginning to start getting that. So the habit and stuff. Like that. understand that you know learning this one skill set can change your entire life. And a, a lot of times in a short, a short amount of time based on your dedication. But also just be around people that um, have a similar interest. Um, make it fun for the people that you're around as well, because they'll also, you know, feed off that energy that you're giving them as well. And um, yeah, just be around a community of of traders at times, because you guys would would feed off of each other's energy. Like, hey Tim, like you caught that trade? Yeah, man, like I caught s some good money or I lost money. Like, but it's interesting because you'll actually have these conversations and that kind of thing. So it's a community at that point. It's, it's pretty much a village. And then like as you guys are growing, you guys are growing at the same time, and you guys um, would you know help each other if you guys are having a hard time and everything. So that would actually push you to want to keep on going. I, I will, uh, I, there's two things that I recommend doing. Um, number one, finding a community. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, like, like it's not as fun. Like I oh, remember, yeah. like, we found a community early. I found a community early in Same. my trading career, and it was really just like we would hop on together and we'd drink mm -hmm. coffee in the mornings. We'd trade New York session, and it'd be a hundred of a uh, hundred of us, and we'd be shooting the shit. And we'd be laughing because we lost five hundred dollars. We lost that all. We lost the account. We blew the account. But it's fun. It was fun. Like yeah, it, it's, it's, it's it's depressing but fun. fun. <laughs> it is it's depressing. But, but when you're with other people, like it just makes it more fun. And you start learning. And this person goes and studies this. This person goes and studies this. And then like you start talking to people, bringing people in. And then like you realize like sometimes like like I guarantee you a person that is not even a successful trader or doesn't have to be a successful trader. A person that's been studying Forex for a year knows more than someone that's never heard of Forex. So they can still teach them something. It's like, it's cool. Like imagine <laughs> sitting at the table and you pull up, you know, the trading app that whatever trading app that you're using, you pull it up and, you know, specifically TradeLogger, the community that's behind it, but you pull up your trading app and you go back and you say, oh, like, I know something that someone else doesn't know, but let me teach them. Like, most people don't even know what crypto is and stuff like that, which is crazy to me. Most people don't even know what Forex is. Yeah. Too. And like, so introducing it to other people is a really, really yeah. cool concept. And you can like, you know, go through everything and show them like, most people don't even know what, you know, Euro USD is. Yeah. Which but is like. Just, just, just being around the community itself, you know, all these things kind of get thrown at you just naturally. Yeah. Cryptos came at us naturally as well because we were already involved inside the community itself. And um, yeah, like it never really came like a, a hard thing, you know, just, yeah. Another thing I would say that I would say that's very, very important, chart time, chart time, chart time, chart time. Yeah. Minimum, How much? minimum an hour a day. Like yeah. absolute minimum. I don't care if you're laying in bed nighttime like this, yeah. just like staring at the chart, you know, going through different currencies, going through maybe, maybe, maybe stocks, maybe crypto, yeah. maybe the housing, it doesn't matter, whatever yeah. it is. A chart yeah. and eventually your eyes will start to notice patterns yeah and your brain will be like I remember when it did this mm -hmm. last time yeah I write it down oh, I remember when it did this and all of a sudden your eyes will start to remember yeah. things and you and you'll, you'll you don't realize how powerful your subconscious is yeah and you'll start to real your, your eyes will start to realize certain yeah. patterns and certain movements and you'll be like this looks really familiar yeah and then that, that's a huge one for me. Yeah, and that's what we call um, studying. Because like, uh, people used to always ask me, like, Q, like, what do you mean like, when you say studying? I, I mean, 
go over, like go on a charts and actually try to apply that trend line. See like what happens. See like what what you're 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 looking for on the charts, like make something play out. That's pretty much creating that muscle memory, mm-hmm. you know? Going back and back testing, back testing, that's pretty much studying. Because you're actually building that muscle memory the entire time. So like when it comes to the charts, like it's effortless to look for a certain pattern or a certain setup because you've been around it so so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It's effortless. Like it, it really is. Like I, I can pull up a chart. Analyze them in two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Two minutes, <laughs> how many I trade so many pairs. And it's like I, I literally like I have every single pair on yeah. on, on my list that mm-hmm. I watch. And I can literally go through them in two to five minutes each. Four different time frames. And it's just because it's just it's muscle memory. Mm-hmm. I know if, if I don't see anything in the first thirty seconds, I don't even look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. easy. So earning three K, learning a meaningful skill, something that and I'm talking now ideally, mm-hmm. learning something that you can use in the future is just not a job. It's not a job where you just waste yeah. your time. You just learn something that you can use in the future. You got a mentor. Um, you have a community that you're part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, spending one hour minimum. Minimum. But three, also three hours not hours. not counting how much time you're 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 studying because I'm pretty sure anything that you guys are passionate about, like beyond trading, you just did it because you, you loved it until you fell asleep probably. If a person is playing soccer, like they're going to play soccer until they're, they're un, until they're exhausted, not just an hour a day and leave and don't 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 touch it again for the rest of the day. Like they're going to play until they are exhausted. So I feel like just don't really put a time limit on how long to study, but at least put a minimum on it. And if you study for 10 hours, then cool. If you study for 12 hours, then cool, but at least put in an hour a day just so you're actually putting some effort towards it. Your brain, your brain yeah. has to be able to waste it. To see it often. Yeah. Got it. So now we're, let's say, earning a little bit more, losing money, earning money. Part of it, yeah. Somehow we got to 10K per month. Yeah. Trading and day job. Okay. When do you quit your day job? Do um, you so, like, I would probably say, like, quit your day job when, when you could actually, um, when, you're, when your normal life needs more attention than what than what, what your job needs that that's when you, you you should leave like if you're more busy in your personal life than you, your job then quit your job at that point because now you could actually focus full time on those 24 hours that you have in your daily life and that means that like all bills are taken care of like your, your family's taken care of like all these things so at least put enough time in like your personal life to then say you know what like i'm i don't need the, that $2,500 a month because I already have enough money here, but also like my skill set is good enough to at least make that $2,500 that I was making at my job. Mm. Then you could pretty much quit quit your job, but be confident enough to even quit knowing that your skill set is good enough to at least make up what you're making at your job yeah. and money to invest. Yep. I, um, so like this one was a little different for me because I had a lot of people come to me and they're like, I was making, you know, 10 grand a month trading um, while working my job. And then I quit my job and I started losing money. And I was like, that's because the pressure of having to make money was now more intense. Mm-hmm. You, you know, when you're more relaxed in the charts. So I, I personally like, like, think you should have you know, maybe six months of your bills saved up mm-hmm. and you should make three times what your job is. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, that's a little bit of a goal for me. But sometimes, you know, I've noticed um, in societies, um, people work better when they're forced to work a lot. Yeah. Like, like if you if you wake up and like pe- people don't have as much self motivation, right? Mm-hmm. And so like when you wake up and you're forced to go, you know, go do your job. <clears> and you maybe it's a sales job. Maybe you you know work six seven hours a day, whatever. Maybe eight hours a day, and you can spend time on the charts in the afternoon. People sometimes do better at that because they're not so focused. Yeah. Sometimes when people go switch back to you know a full time trader, they start yeah. going downhill a little yeah. bit. So make sure you have enough money saved. Your account starts enough. And you have everything in little outlines the way that you can actually like, organize and it doesn't matter yeah and like but i mean i think you should have all yeah. your have all your ducks in a row yeah and um i have a thing called um like positive pressure like positive stress actually it's like saying um add more to your plate so you pretty much understand how much pressure you got to add on yourself that month to get to that next month which means that like if you have if you quit if, if you quit your job and everything you're trading full time at, at that point and your rent now is $3,500 a month. You know that you have to pretty much bust your ass to at least make that because you do not want to get evicted. And then you have the car payment that's, let's say, $1,200. You have to make at least that to not t- get your tar- your, your car um, repossessed. 
So it's pretty much just like knowing that you have things to take care of. So you have to pretty much focus and apply that skill set and get better on the charts each and every single month because you have these things to take care of. You have these responsibilities. So it's kind of like a positive pressure knowing that you gotta you have things to take care of and you have to actually meet that quota mm. at least. Did you guys have a moment in your life when you were so down where you where you thought like it's enough? This is the last day that this is happening and I'm gonna change everything in that moment. Yeah, right um, of passage or something. Yeah, How not like you? no, so like um I mean I had like a bad breakup and that kind of thing. And then um that like after that was gone, I pretty much spent at least like a week um in my house. I was on the charts every day just on the couch in the same position. I, I would have friends leave and come back. I'm in the same position on on my laptop. I have friends that could tell you the same thing. I'm just on the computer, just charting, charting, charting for like days and days, like 24 hours a day. I'm, I'm barely even sleeping. Like, and whenever I do fall asleep, I'm falling asleep like this with the laptop on my lap. So after that one week, like I pretty much had to, to break out of like that depression that I was going through. And then I feel like that was like my biggest shift because, you know, um, that made me actually apply, you know, um, my, myself a bit more into a skill set that I was passionate about to get to that next level without actually feeling that um, I have to be down. Like, you know, depression is a choice, I, I feel like. And you have to pretty much, you know, uh, find happiness in some kind of way. Um, and, and that's what I actually found, what, what was the charts and the effort of building my skill set on the charts. So like, that's what, you know, changed me. Yeah. So for me, it was, it was more of along the lines of like, just growing up the way I grew up and stuff like that, where I grew up, I did not want to be like part of that in life. Mm -hmm. Did not want to be part of like that life that was there. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm gonna you know, do literally, we'll do whatever it takes. And that moment of just like, like watching, like going to a job and working and things for other people. And you know, like working and working and working. Like, yeah, it was, it wasn't, it was fun. I was making my own money, I was young and it was cool. But yeah. it was just like, this is not where I wanna be. Mm. This is not where I want my life, you know? And that was that moment of like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure I don't have to do mm. this anymore. And I, it, I was young. I was like, I think I was like 17 when that happened. Yeah. And I, I was young. I, got, I started young. I got everything young. Yeah. And it came to me really fast at a young age. And like, it was just like, I just didn't, I was over it. I mean, but yeah, I was yeah. even working for my dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Owning part of the business yeah. with my dad. What was it? And at yeah. 17, working on cars. And I love cars. I love working on cars. Mm -hmm. I like working on my cars now. Yeah. I think it's fun. You know what I mean? But like doing something that I thought I loved at the time, which I did love it, it was fun, it was, and I was passionate, it just wasn't satisfying to me. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't all the way satisfying to me. Yeah, and um, I have a thing that, um, I mean, I'm born in Jamaica, so like a lot of the things that I was seeing around like my environment, it was really, you know, too like motivational, you know, like like my uh, parents and everything was still like very, very well, but coming to um, America, like we're seeing a lot of different things now. So I, I felt like changing like that surrounding that I was in, to now a different environment that I'm seeing Lamborghinis drive by, bigger um, houses, condos, and that kind of thing. And um, like, why wouldn't I want to, you know, strive for better, you know? Yeah. So I seen more, so I was I was able to envision more, you know? So me seeing more actually um, gave me the ability to say like, yo, I, I love cars, I, I love this, I love that. But working at a job is not gonna pay for that. Working at a job making twelve hundred dollars a month is not going to pay for that condo that I want, that car that I want, that 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 trip that I want. So so finding trading, it gave us the ability to to know that like there's no kind of income cap in this industry, and then this can actually you know be that um that catalyst that actually gets you to where you want to be known that you can make as much money as you want to. Like Anthony said, hundred thousand dollars in one day, great. You know that could do a lot a lot for a person. And mind you, it's that's one day. There's another 365 days, well, 364 days, um, and well, leap year. So, <laughs> so, leap year. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like just um, see more, see more, because then you will probably want more. You know, so like get out there, you know, see more, um, be in different environments that can actually help motivate you as well, um, because that'll help that'll help you push the the limits in what needs to be done to get to that next level as well, and and what what um, vehicle you should take. To even get to that next level, so trading was definitely that catalyst that actually, you know, like change everything. And I, and I yeah. think trading was just—I think it's just a good thing to just know. It's a good skill set to know, you know, because if you can sit back and you can analyze a chart, you can analyze that 
you can analyze anything. That's I mean that's what we are. I mean our data stocks, like, like we cryptos, that, commodities. Companies. Yeah, we com analyze companies because we spend every day looking at the chart, making calculated, um, calculated, and educated decisions mm -hmm. on what the future is going to be happening. Correct. No one can predict the future, right? Well, we or, can, kind of. Kind of can. <laughs> and it's like, so like all of a sudden, not like what trading allowed us to become better is actual business and understanding the business side of things. Mm -hmm. And like he has, like he has a positive pressure. I said the same thing. Put yourself in pressure situations and routine changes. Mm -hmm. So for him, moving to America was a routine change. It changed everything for him. I believe in routine changes. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I, you know, maybe you go, maybe you trade New York session. Maybe switch it up next week and trade London session. Got it. Now you're at 10k. What you should not do? And what are like five things? Um. Don't start to splurge out on like you know buying the, those lu luxurious things that that you're striving for. Like mm -hmm. not yet. I feel like that that's still the moment that you're still supposed to be grinding. Ten thousand dollars a month is still not enough money to actually you know go on those crazy trips, buy that crazy car, yeah. buy that crazy. It's, it's not enough. It might sound like enough, but it's not enough. It runs out very very quickly. Um, that should pretty much put you in a position to now invest bigger, invest more, um, start to diversify your portfolio in some kind of way. That's when you could actually start to, you know, get like some kind of a passive income, um, you know, some sort of uh, income that pretty much doesn't re really have to be dependent on just you the entire time, start to help invest in, in other companies, some stocks maybe, like that kind of thing. But um, also mainly invest in like a bigger trading account as well. So you can now start to apply a bit more pressure to your account to make a, a bit more money. Until that next that next level, I would say would you get to 10k a month for, let's say, three months in a row, double down. That's when you double down. You so after three months, double down your double down trade. everything. Like you should be doubling down. Like like what got you to 10k mm. is not the same thing that's going to get you to 100k. So double down, double down. You need to you need to focus harder. You need to focus yeah. on your on your strengths, yeah. and you need to start making like putting applying that pressure. Yeah. And so like. I would say don't give up, like, don't stop, don't change your routine. Mm -hmm. Like that's the big thing I see. Yeah. Everyone has a goal. They're like, I want to make 10K a month. They make 10K a month for like three or four months. They change the their first, that's routine the, up. That, that's the first thing they the change is the routine thing. actually. It's, yeah. it's like, all of us, why, why are you changing your life? You just got to where you want to go. Yeah. And it's like, and I don't get why people do it. Like, like it's people like do it. Self-sabotage. It is self-sabotage. Yeah. Like, I see people all the time, that's like something they do. I have so many examples um, of people being really, really good, like being really, really good and really successful at some things, and then they like like change their routine. And like, like I've literally seen people like play tennis, right? And like they're getting really good at tennis, and then all of a sudden they're like, I want to go play racquetball, and they like switch this sport up, and it's like kind of the same concept, but it's like as like, and then they go back to tennis and they're really bad at tennis now mm -hmm. because it's something different, right? Why are you changing? Don't change. Don't change it up. Mm -hmm. Keep That's going yeah. and double down. Keep going and double down. That's like the yeah. biggest piece of advice that you get is just because you hit your goal, that doesn't mean you should stop. Yeah. It become it starts um you actually can learn things along that way to 10k, mm -hmm. but um you have to learn a lot more to get to that hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. So now you're doubling down. Yeah. yeah. 10k growing. growing. Yeah, small things, but those small things is, is gonna help you long term though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. It's the same concept. You're growing from 10k, 50k, 100k. You're saving money. No, it's, it's, it's the same, same concept. It's the same concept. They just get bigger. Oh, I feel that, yeah. Your account size gets bigger. Your investments gets bigger. Your risk gets bigger. Like everything that like 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 your mindset. Maybe maybe worse. Maybe it's just us. I don't know. But your mindset doesn't change. I wake up hungry every day mm. to create business, to make more money, to do more things. So like it's very very hard for that you know to change. But I would say like. It doesn't really change like you don't change as much as you say you can do like you you don't mm. but like you're still gonna have wake up with that little bit of fear you're still gonna wake up with that eager you're still gonna wake up with wanting to do more yeah you're hunger you're gonna want to yeah. keep going that hunger like, it doesn't go away how did you get it's, it's still fresh um the, the hundred i feel like no, no, hunger or hunger hunger the hunger <laughs> um like i said I get, yeah, positive the, pressure. the positive pressure and the passion, yeah. you know, um, and then also meeting people along the way. Make, make sure that you're networking along the way as well, because there are certain things that you know that a person doesn't know. Like when I met Anthony, like I was doing good, but at the same time, like just us just getting that connection made things just blossom even more because now we're, we're applying his skill. We're applying 
my skill to now just, you know, using like in Unity to then build a bigger business and that what kind of thing. What if you guys met much earlier? Um, wh when? What if you guys met much earlier? We met, I was, I was young when we met. Yeah, no. I was young, I was in, was I even 21? Damn, where are you? Oh, Dude, 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, been, we've been business partners for six, seven Probably, uh, years. Probably, yeah, seven years yeah. Um, if we met earlier, um, so, be the same I, yeah, that, but I do believe in God's time. You know, I believe that um, all timing is is the right time. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we met at a certain time, he was on, on his stuff, I'm on my stuff, and then it was like the perfect time to then, you know, make that collaboration. If it was before that, I, I, I would have probably not been, been ready enough mentally, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. who, who's to say, you know? It's yeah. already happened, so, yeah. <laughs> but guess what, it happened, I, and now we're... Yeah. 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 Cause I'm, industry. I'm not really big on hypotheticals. I'm not really big on hypotheticals because what real, like what's real is real. So, um, you know, it's, we can't really go back in time and everything else. So hypothetically is. That I want to meet, he's talking about synchronicity and he spoke to probably every single interesting people in the world mm -hmm. just doing these interviews. And yeah, I have an interview with him like next week, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one Croatian guy. So I'm, yeah. I'm from Croatia, but there are no, not many people who talk to each nationals. And okay. I yeah. don't live in Croatia for a long time now, okay. but if there was one person that I want to meet, yeah. this guy. So he interviews all these, you know, conspiracy theories that people who believe in, you know, whatever, strange things that businessmen, everybody. And he spoke about synchronicity and then if you look like 10 years before or whatever you look at your life could it be anyhow else as it is right now mm, right yeah. can, can it be different like different and you look at every single point of decision that you made to lead up to that point be, yeah to lead up to that point yeah and it's, you're thinking now would it be would you do something different it's, probably it's crazy it's crazy because um I, I thought about that once and i'm like Okay, if certain things didn't happen, I'm pretty sure I would have still met Anthony because I was already, you know, on that certain path and he was already on a certain path. So like we were like this yeah, yeah. and eventually, you know. And your reach, with your reach. Yeah, like, he, yeah, exactly. And then um, we would have still noticed each other in some kind of way to then have that conversation because he, he he's very, very vocal. So like he'll actually <laughs> reach out immediately and that kind of stuff and then that would have started the conversation. So like that would have happened regardless, I feel like. Timing wise, prob probably a little bit different but um, yeah, like I mean, um, I I do believe in, in God's timing, and I do believe that everything does happen for for a reason, and that you meet every single person for a reason, mm -hmm. and that things that are forced doesn't really last. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like it's hard for me to answer that question because I don't really think there's anything I would actually change about my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, even if like I I legitimately like there's not a single thing I change about my life. It, like, I, I literally it, can't. it played out perfect in. In yeah. your own head, I yeah. Can't, I Correct. can't think of anything that. I mean, maybe. You know, maybe so a, a bigger, to yeah. say, to, <laughs> I mean, to, to even no, no, to like. Than, I, nothing I would say that I could really honestly change. I believe this. Like, if if you said that you have to change anything, that if anything was a little bit different, then that means that you're not showing gratitude, exactly. and that and that you're not like grateful for what happened, how it happened. What we have. If anything changed, or if you said that you wanted to change anything. That would have said that you're ungrateful. You know, maybe, you know maybe if if if, if you wanted more, yeah, true, like that, right? I could I could go a little longer beer or something. You <laughs> no. know what I mean? I think it, I think everything happened p perfectly. Uh -huh. You know, as perfect as it, it could have been, and it's still going. So yeah, we're still growing. At what point? At what point do you buy your mom a car or, or property? So um, I mean. So put, put it this way, like I remember this, this one time, um, like my um, sister had my phone actually, and then like my bank account had popped up. It said, said about like like nine thousand dollars, and then um, at that point, like they were upset that um, I was I I wasn't paying more bills, and I'm like, yo, listen, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Until you know, years later, I'm at where I'm at now. Now I could actually spend that thirty, forty thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars. $110,000 on, on a vehicle that they want and not feel it. Back then, I feel like it was a time that if I did, I'll be doing it out of just being, you know, desperate mm -hmm. and hurting myself. Yeah. You know, it comes to a point that like, you know, like if I'm able to actually spend that, I have to not feel it. 
So you 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 buy your parents a car or a house and that kind of stuff to a, at a point when you could take that money out of the equation and not feel it. And when I say like buying a car, I don't mean payments. Pay it off. House, pay it off. You know, like just get things that they don't have to stress about. Because if, if you buy a person a car, but they got to make the payments or payments are being made, now it's a bill. Now it's stress. Mm-hmm. Buy it to a point that you could actually take that money out of the equation and it's not a stress to you, but all, all is beneficial to them. And they don't have to stress about it. Insurance is paid for. Everything's paid for. And then they just have it. So I feel like if you could pretty much just spend that extra 50K or, or 100K, you have to not feel it to make it comfortable to actually spend that money on a car. Yeah. Or, or any, time, any type of gift to a family member. You can't feel it. Because if you do, then it's not, it's not time yet. Got it. Yeah. At what point did uh, these interesting deals start coming to you? Um, it, it comes when you start to, um, it's not even about the money, it's about more just your ability to network and have conversations to then have those deals and that kind of thing come to you. Um, You can make that million dollars a month and no one knows you. Mm -hmm. But if your person is making that million dollars a month, but you're also super social, like Anthony is super social. So like deals just come come to him. He'll go to a bar and all of a sudden, hey, like I'm owner of of this company. (laughs) Great. Um, But it comes with personality. It comes with just being able to network, have conversations, and um, just being a person that's a bit more open to going outside and interacting with other people, despite how much money that you're, that you're making. Because if you're a person that just makes money, but, but doesn't actually network with anyone, no one's gonna give you deals. It's boring. <laughs> it's no, but, and it's boring. No, but no one's gonna ever approach you with a deal or opportunity because they don't they don't know you, you don't know? Be, don't be a weirdo. Yeah, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> don't yeah. be a weirdo. Um, but no, like, like when it comes to like, you know, buying stuff for other people and gifts, and like when you can actually do stuff like that, it's really cool um, and it's really powerful. But the number one thing that I can't stress enough is take care of yourself first. Always. Like, I see too many people spread so thin because they're trying to take care of everyone else. And like you realize that if someone is trying to take care of everyone else, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like, like it just, it, the system doesn't work. That system does not work. Taking care of everyone else at the same time you're taking care of yourself. You no, know, build yourself up first and then naturally they will all grow with you Yeah. because they're going to be forced to grow with you. And so like build yourself up first, like make sure you're set because if you're not doing that, and you're gonna spread yourself so thin to where you can't grow. You're capping your growth. Yeah. You're letting people around you cap your growth. Yeah, because I have a thing that I say like, um, if I'm building a house out of bricks, how, how can I give you bricks when I'm trying to build my own house? If that's the rate, then I'm never gonna have a house because I'm giving my, my bricks away while I'm trying to build my house out of bricks. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So like, let me build my house first and then when that's completed, then I could give you we'll my you. bricks and not feel affected. Yep. And so like you like and that's like a huge thing is and then mm-hmm. and then people always are trying to like grab things from you and stuff like that and they, like, they're like trying to grab money or they're trying to grab this they're trying to grab that and you, you just gotta be like no don't be the nice guy don't be the people pleaser mm-hmm. doesn't work just how do you protect yourself in situations um I mean stay kind of private I believe to stay private but just don't be afraid to say no don't ever like, say like, don't say, don't, say no. no like like it's, practice it's okay. yeah look in the mirror. And, no. and they say no, no, no. no. Like just <laughs> practice, yeah. because it's it's definitely the hardest thing. Because you yeah. you, you don't want to say no to a person that, that you actually care about. Yeah. But you you also gotta respect yourself enough to say no. Yeah. You know. And like I mean I believe in like the theory of always saying yes to an extent to sometimes. Yeah. But that's because people will take it just take advantage of you. You yeah. just always say yes. So don't want that. So like practice being able to say no to people. Like, I know it sucks right now, but like, say, hey, like, there's a bigger picture here. There's a bigger vision. I can help, like, if I'm trying to buy a company for, let's say, let's say the company costs a million dollars, but someone else needs 900000 like, or even 100000 and I can't buy that company, they could potentially make more money to where I can give them more than they need. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, focus on yourself and build your company and stuff like that. And I'm not saying, I'm a big believer in giving back. You give back. You always give back. Yeah. Everything, everything that you do, you give back. You yeah. give back, you give back, you give back. Make sure you're doing that. Yeah. And then, and then just putting yourself out there, like when it comes to finding deals or companies to invest in and partnerships, put yourself, excuse me, put yourself out there and don't be afraid. Like, like, like that's something that we, like yeah. said earlier, double down, right? The investments just get bigger. Yeah. We're doing the same thing we were doing five, six years ago. Yeah. Just the investments were $10,000, you know, mm-hmm. five to $10,000. And now we're exactly. we're talking about deals that are like a million dollars to invest in that time, yeah. three million at times. We, 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 yeah, we bought, we're buying parts of major companies yeah. now that are publicly traded, like well-known companies. And so it just part it just starts becoming double down on the same thing. Mm-hmm. Investments get bigger, risk gets bigger, but your money gets bigger. 
I love it. Yeah. You said you protect yourself by being more private. How do you guys protect yourself? Um, you... I, I mean, I never ever, I never ever talk about income. I, uh, well, I show, you know, I show what I show, cool, whatever. But um, I never ever talk about personal finances. I never ever get into details about personal finances. Like whatever they see, then then they could assume whatever. Yeah. Um, so I never ever, you know, go too too in detail with that. Um, nor do I. Um, yeah, I mean. That's pretty much the biggest thing. So not talking too much and yeah, learn how to say no. And and don't feel as if like you have to answer every single question, you know? Yeah. People can have assumptions all they want yeah. about what you make, what you do and all that. And honestly, at the end of the day, like, like let people talk because I just grow with your network anyways. If people are sitting there, okay, no need to step in a burden down. If people are loving, loving with like having fun sharing with stuff with you, it's going to grow your network. You know what I mean? So I will say that's a very, very positive thing yeah. um, and you know just just being smart you know simply just protecting yourself by being smart like like i like there's little things like that we do like like right i mean it won't matter right now but you know we're in malta we don't post for malta you know what i mean we don't put that out there right we post somewhere in europe. i post somewhere in europe somewhere in europe i post somewhere in europe like literally everything is somewhere in europe or i'm here or waiting to post for certain different things and so it's just protecting yourself in all kinds of aspects just being conscious of what there are people that like want. It's weirdos. There's Weirdo, th yeah. th there are weirdos out there, but um, you know, it, it comes with the territory. Um, but at the end of the day, like we we spread so much positivity that we've never ever encountered a person that was super weird. But you know, you never know. You know, it's, it's seven billion people out here. You never know sometimes. Yeah. Um, and how did being huge on social media, or when did you when did your deals start coming to you because of social media at one point? I think it was more just um, people seeing how we move on a, a daily basis, how we actually move as, you know, um, as a person. It could be just um, business that we're growing, um, things that we're investing in as far as like just um, our efforts on, on the charts, how passionate that we are about the charts, the people that, that we're around. People seeing that alone, I feel like that makes them a bit more comfortable with trying to reach out and get some sort of conversation to get a, a deal and that kind of thing. But just more, yeah, just like kind of like showing um, what we're all about as a person on, in business, like all these things. And then, you know, people start to to reach out at, at that point. Being authentic. Yeah. Just being authentic. Simple. Yeah. You know, like, like I mean, I'll be sitting there and drinking a cup of coffee and it's like I'll post a picture of the coffee. You know what I mean? Like it's little stuff like like poor people yeah. can relate to you yeah. because people want they want to be relatable. You know, they want to be relatable for people can relate. Oh, he drinks his coffee with cream. For some reason, I don't know. I do too. Or, or I do too. Like, that's pineapple cool. on pizza. That's always a thing. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's always a thing. I don't you know, like just, pineapple on pizza. I love it. But you see, but like, <laughs> he likes it. You know what I mean? So, like, but, but I think like the biggest thing as far as, you know, social media and making the, the deals happen through social media is showing your life and being authentic. Like, I went through a phase like a while back where I thought everything that I posted had to be perfect. And it really like screwed everything up. Yeah. It didn't screw everything up. It, just, it was just a learning phase for me, right? Like now realizing like, like it doesn't matter like, if I hold the camera like this or like it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Having fun with it and being real. Like you don't have to have a, an 8K camera to take a photo and then right. expect the the best engagement off of that one yeah. photo. Yeah. When you could take an, a regular iPhone photo and then that gets all the engagement, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm and I'm pretty sure. It came right, 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 right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. same concept. Um, it's just more about just um, just being a moment, you know, and not everything has to be, you know, like that picture perfect type thing. Because at any day, like it's more about just trying to be relatable and engaging with with the the audience as much as possible as well. And when does a new trader, the one that was watching this whole journey, when should they start posting on social media? Immediately. Immediately. Because, because, so like I have now 4,300 and something photos on my Instagram, right? It shows when I was back in college, when I was working at Target, when I left Target, when I had like, like the, like, you know, like my, like my, like my first day after leaving my job and when that journey started at that point, when I was making a hundred dollar trades and then when I was making $10,000 trades and when I was making a hundred thousand dollar trades and then like my biggest day, $400,000. Like, so they seen everything from the ground up. So it's a lot more relatable knowing that they could go all the way back to the point one and then say, you know what? He was there also versus just posting six photos of you living lavish the entire time. So I, I say just use Instagram as you documenting your life versus only showing your highlights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 like not to mention like back to like, 
you can you can help other people experience and learn this industry mm -hmm. too even if you're not like extremely successful um in it yet start showing what you're looking at and then get feedback like i can't tell you how many times people send me pictures or they post pictures of like hey what do you think about this chart market and i'll be mm -hmm. like well personally it doesn't work for me but it could work out for you i don't really know um as of right now like i'm still biased short on this you know yeah. what i mean because of this 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 and then all of a sudden people are like oh wow you're actually never talking seen about you're yeah. hurting like they're teaching me and so it's like by people reaching out to us and tagging us and bringing us aware to their page we're going to help bring awareness to yeah. them as well and we're going to teach them the way because there's nothing more than that q and i like to do other than helping teach people like, like it's fun because like it's different like now it's routine for us mm -hmm. right and so now it's not not gonna say it's, it's 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 super easy but it's it's easy for us right we know what we're looking for we know what we want we know what we need to do we know how to do it right it's simple but for us to go back in time almost and talking to people and not realizing that they don't even know what a pip is or something like that and so it's like it's cool it's cool for us to do that yeah like we um love knowing that a person is still um trying trying yeah but also like a person that is just getting that passion mm -hmm. for the craft knowing that we we've, we've been had the passion for the craft we're open to actually giving that that extra knowledge to help push them a little bit more you know you know it'd be cool to do what's that um, maybe we can do a tray locker or something like that yeah setting up groups of five people like a small group where they could connect it to similar or different people doesn't matter we'll figure it out but five people different groups and you got five 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 some kind of bot that tells them hey did you do this day today did you do that and it, it's all private they check with it they mm -hmm. gain the stats it goes somewhere in the database and every week after a week it shows in a group chat for all those five people, how much mm -hmm. they fucked up, what did they do, what okay. did they didn't. It kind of shows and, uh, accountability yeah. also. Yeah, so they can be friends, they can be some random people. I had this idea in the beginning of 2020. Yeah. All this coach, coaching industry was, you know, skyrocketing, going, through, yeah. skyrocketing, going through the roof. No one had a software that can actually, because that's what they pay, accountability. Mm -hmm. people pay for Correct. Yeah. Uh, what if all they were successful, they don't know each other, you connect them in the same group. Now they have accountability bodies, but they also network. They also... Uh, know that if they mess it up, it will be posted publicly, mm -hmm. and uh, it can be a product, it can be something like subscription, whatever. But it connects like a lot of dots together. Mm -hmm. Very smart. I like it. Um, the, the fact that you know you're kind of like forcing people to have those people that have the same interest versus them having to find it. And it keeps you out of their you know back all the time as yeah. a coach. They have a kind of accountability, yeah. accountability groups where they already are pushing each other. Yeah. You don't need to tell them all the time. Correct. Tell them, hey, how's it going? Whatever. Yeah. They already know. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's more like a, an, an iron, sharpened iron type thing. You know, it's gonna be a, a bunch of people that pretty much understand that they all have to be accountability for everyone completing everything every single week. And then when that um, survey comes in to make sure everyone has done everything, you know, you could actually, you know, help that person that probably slacked and then that next week, and so on and so on. Like they could actually help each other. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a big thing that Q and I have is like we call each other accountable. Yeah. We, we 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 do it in like sometimes competition ways. Like yesterday we were in two different trades and we we're like sitting here like throwing jabs at each yeah. other and like yeah. having fun with it. Yeah. But we're accountability partners. Like like my goal like is to hit a certain trade number before him. Not yeah. because no, nah, it's no, nah, it's like, it's. Him, it, but we're accountability partners, and we like to talk shit to each other yeah. and have fun with it. But like we, we're like we're we're friendly competition because you know. When but what did we say earlier? Days, positive pressure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's positive pressure. Yeah. You know, I want to see him grow, and he wants to see me grow. Like we want to see each other grow, but we're also applying that extra pressure as well, just to make sure that we are growing in, in some. Other. Yeah. We're forcing yeah. each other to, to grow. Correct. Mm -hmm. So like those. Teams, you're forcing people to grow. Yeah. yeah. Same concept, just a bigger group. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. I wanted to ask you guys, what is it that you want to talk about that no one ever asked you? Oh um, damn, I feel like I've I've been asked so many things. Um, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of hard to say honestly, but I think it's just more just um oh, probably one thing I'll probably say just I mean don't don't be afraid to start a business and like like post on on social media and that kind of stuff, not caring what anybody thinks like. I think um, people overthink a lot of things um, before they actually post a, a picture or like or something or or, or, or getting in or, or get in, in, into something new. Like they overthink it um, to the point that they don't do it anymore. You know, 
So I feel like just whatever you're into, just strive for it. Like, don't really care what, what other people think about it, you know? Yeah. The, like, when you start only doing things just for people acceptance, like, that's when you stop living, I feel like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So just, like, you know, do things that you're actually interested in. It could be trading. It, it could be actual the trading, like, the business side of trading. It's up to you, wh whatever. You know, just try to actually, you know, find a passion for that certain thing and, and strive for it. And don't care what the feedback is because you're doing it because of you. Yeah, and the people that are crazy enough, the people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world, typically are the crazy ones that do. It, yep. You know what I mean? So um, at least they're for, trying. Yeah, but for for us, like something that I want to share is like, we're not we're no one's competitions. Like we're not competing. We don't want a competition. We're here to grow and have fun and build. Like like yeah. that's something that I like love talking about is because we're not anyone's competition. We're not any other company's competition. We're nothing like that. I don't I don't believe we don't believe in competing. We don't believe it. We're in our lane. We're going to build our own lane. And if we have to build the damn road, we'll build the road. Whatever we have yeah. to do. And people can join us. People can join with us. People can have fun with us. And we can grow. But we're, like, we're no one's competition. Yeah. We're not in competition with anybody. Because I had posted something th this morning, actually. Um, I had said, uh, it's w when coming in, into an industry, it's always and. As far as it's this company and this company. It's not this company or this company. Yeah. You know, like that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, people yeah. people always think it's just this company or this company mm -hmm. versus saying, oh, it's this company and this company. It could be in this like one space. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. But whenever it comes to like people saying or or thing, they feel like, like it's like a battle every single time. It's You don't have to choose sides. You could choose both, yeah. you know, and enjoy both at the same time. So just understanding that aspect of things that like, you know, you could actually be in an environment where there's two great companies. There's two great people. You know, it doesn't have to be a battle. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the post on Trey Locker when we were posting it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was, it was a very, very important thing because I felt like it was just that's something that's definitely overlooked. Yeah. And people don't don't think like that because they they always want to see. It's kind of like I've never seen it, but like you know, back in the days that in in Rome in the Colosseum, like people want to see a fight. They never ever want to be in the fight, but they but but they would ra rather sit back and watch a fight. You know, because they want to see these two companies go. At it Best versus understand. Like this, yeah. This yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like it's just, it's just, it's just better that way. It's, yeah, there's more money to be made. Number one, there's, there's more excitement. Like, it's more fun. And it's, it's not even about the money. It's not, it's not even about the money. It's about just the impact. It's, it's about the impact. It's, it's like, how many directions can it go when you do two yeah. the yeah. powers yeah. collide? You know, or or exactly. go together. Yeah. And that's so like that's something that's really been heavy, I guess, with us lately. It's like. The competition, like we're not here to compete. We're just we're here to grow. We're mm -hmm. here to grow. And we're here to, to build. That's mm -hmm. simply it. God, um, I have like uh, a few more quick questions. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, so keep it quick. All right. Um, one book you would give as a gift if you had to give one book for as a gift for the rest of your life. Um, I'll probably say the if it blows the power. Which one? The, uh, what's it? Uh, 48, 48, Laws 48, 48 Laws of Power. I just started to read it like about a couple of days ago now. Um, and yeah, like I'm on just like, um, I think the third, the third law. And it's just like life changing because it, it's so much insight there, you know? And the, and the fact that there, that is, there's so much information in one book, um, I think it's just beneficial because it teaches you how to think a little bit different, mm -hmm. how to actually, um, you know, just deal with the situation a, a little bit different as well. And um, yeah, like compared to a lot of the other things, I feel like th th this book is more just like a, like a life, mm -hmm. a life benefit versus just a skill type of benefit. It's benefiting you as a person, how you think, how you act, how you move and, and all that. So like, that's pretty much like one book that I would definitely recommend. Am I, am I journey of... Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> if you can think about it. Um... My favorite, I, guess, I would say my favorite failure would be not becoming a, as successful as a trader faster, like as fast mm -hmm. as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. It taught me resilience. It taught me <clears throat> passion. It taught me how to, uh, to like really work. You know, most people want to become successful in a year of trading. It took mm -hmm. me five. It took me five years to start making money. And it took me two years after five, I would say after five years to like make life-changing money so i would say that, that that's my favorite I, that, that'd be my the best failure i had because it taught me a lot 
Um, okay, so like my favorite failure, I would, I would have to say that um, I'm glad and I appreciate my um, college program not getting me into the program. <laughs> because <laughs> because that, that would have changed so much, I feel like, because um, I was actually going to college for um, nursing. Very, very different for, from what I do now. But um, I did all my prerequisites. I did everything that I was supposed to do, but I just didn't get into the program. And um, if I did, I would actually stop, you know, trying to build my business, stop trading as much. I would have stopped pretty much everything because I would have been so just like um, overwhelmed with, with all the work and that kind of stuff that it took to actually get into like that industry at the time. So me not doing that, it made me focus full time on what I was currently doing, which was trading, teaching, all these other things to get me to where I am today. Because if, if it didn't happen that way, then I would have still been probably in nursing school and that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Got it. Two more questions. What is one bad recommendation that you hear in the industry constantly that you don't agree with? And if you could have one recommendation that you think is right, that you would put on the billboard for everybody to see in the world, for all seven, eight billion people, what would it be? Hmm. Um, what was the first part again? Uh, what's a bad recommendation in the industry? <clears throat> a bad on? recommendation? And it's just repeating, yeah. Um. I think the, be, the probably the worst recommendation is uh, <laughs> how do I say that? <laughs> I know what you're right. Oh God! Don't say that. I will say that. Um, I think like probably like one of well, the second one I'll probably say uh, don't uh, people are afraid to invest in other people, as far as invest into a person that has what you want. So like where you're trying to go, there's a person that's already there but they don't want to invest inside that person because it's that person. Like they don't want to give money to a person to invest inside the knowledge that they have, the course that they have, because it's that person, it. mm -hmm. you know? It's like they would, they would help a business or not help a business knowing it's that person own a business, you know? Okay. So th th that's probably the wackest thing. Um, and it, it happens so, so often versus just understanding that that business is good. You know, that person is good. Why, why not get their knowledge? And not being scared to actually spend money on something that you actually want as well, because the, the fact that a person would, would would rather lose all this money versus just investing in something to, to not make them lose all this money is crazy to me. Because versus spending, let's say, $700 on a class, they would rather lose $4,000 in the markets before they then go invest. <laughs> so so it's, 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 it's definitely working backwards. But they're open to investing into a professor at a college that they don't know yeah. for information that can't make them money. Yeah. How does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'll probably say just, you know, like that's probably like one bad recommendation that I, I hear very, very often. Oh, just go on YouTube. It's, it's, it's all free. Good luck. Those people that's on YouTube is not making the kind of money that you could make with an organized platform and an, an organized um, course yes. set up from A to Z versus G, X, X, B, but it was like, that's YouTube. YouTube is scattered. So you gotta pretty much find information in a scattered way, and that's not gonna really benefit you long-term versus investing in something, regardless of who owns that, and getting that knowledge and using it to your benefit. And I know I said earlier, I said start on YouTube, but what I mean by it, so clarification, when I say start on YouTube, I mean like <clears throat> learn how to use like apps, learn like what a PIP is, learn, you know, basic, basic spreads, stuff. like basic, yeah, basic yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a ton of stuff, but like when you actually want to learn how to like trade, like learn from a mentor. Yeah. So like, like I, it's I, okay. So I don't teach people what a PIP is. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't teach people what, like yeah. why the spread is, what the base pair is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really teach that because yeah. I feel like you can learn, you can learn that terminology and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like a simple search. You know yeah. what I mean? So like that's what I believe. But uh, strategy and that kind of stuff, okay, cool. Then now you got to invest. Yeah. You can learn like the more basic stuff, like what is Fibonacci? What is this? What is that? But how to use it all together in in a style, you have to invest inside that. Yeah. So either you're going on YouTube just to get clarification on what is what, but to actually get like a skill set, an actual style, it costs money to invest inside that at the time. Because YouTube is not going to give you a trading style. Yeah. And was it one thing that you would put on the billboard for everybody to see if you could make it. I would probably well, say, um, <clears throat> <laughs> I guess I would, I would probably, 
I'll, <laughs> I'll probably say um like like my famous quote um that I always say believe you're great before anybody else does because um believing that you're great before anybody else does is major because you're starting something knowing that you have the capability to actually t- to be great in a certain field versus um whenever you're now great, now everyone's telling you that you're great. So believing that you're great before you even get to the point that you are actually great, you know, because that's giving you the confidence and and like what you need to even strive for that greatness first. So you don't have to wait for people to actually praise you. They'll praise you eventually, you know? So that's believing that you're great before anybody else does, because, um, you know, um, you gotta have that confidence going into a field so you could actually strive to be the best. Um, my, my thing that I would say that I don't like, like about the industry, like so a quote or something like that, is, is that trading is the basically that trading, how do you say this, that trading is the end all be all. People, I see people mm-hmm. come in the industry That's and they, they, like, they try and sell something in the trading space. I'm like, oh, in one year you can change your entire life. Yeah. And I'm not going to say your life's not going to change in one year. I'm not saying that one bit. Very possible, but, but yeah. It's very possible. What I'm saying is that that doesn't mean it's the end all be all. It's not the end all be all. It's just trading. Like, like, mm-hmm. like it's okay. Like, have fun trading, have all that. But, like, it doesn't need to be the end all be all right away. Like, there's too many people trying to sell the dream, and it scares people so much that they end up quitting so early when they don't hit that goal. Yeah. Like, I've seen people literally tell people, Oh, if you start trading now in six months, you can quit your job and have a full time income and do all this stuff. And then they don't have it. And then they go, and they go well, I'm not meant for this then, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so other people are doing it in six months, and I'm not meant for it. No, and that's the biggest like misconception of the industry. And I hate that. I hate that stigma for us. Um, and then speaking specifically in trading, what I would want to put on a billboard would be let trading complement your life. Don't make it your life. Mm-hmm. So, like, I like teach people a lot of times. You know, your first goal should be make trading pay your phone bill every month. At least that. At least that. And then your second goal, maybe make it pay your phone bill and your car note. Yeah. And then make it pay for your gas and your car and your phone bill. Then make it pay for this bill. And then all of a sudden, when trading starts paying for all these bills, you can then realize. So, like, don't, like, you know what I mean? Make trading complement your life at first, and then it will come to be everything that you need. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yep. Come through two lines and that. No cold talk. I don't do mine like that. I don't spill beans. Now I'm not hands like that. I hit and don't text because I'm not.